Welcome to the Mako PCI walkthrough. In this short demonstration, we will show how a merchant can set up their local area network, LAN, in a PCI DSS compliant manner using the Mako system. We select the site we wish to manage and drill down to the PCI tab. Clicking on the PCI DSS template wizard button starts the process. The first action is to read and accept the disclaimer. It is important for the merchant to be aware of their responsibilities around PCI DSS. Next, we select which LAN port the merchant wishes to use as their payment network. By default, LAN 1 will be used. We ask some basic information about the merchant's payment processing, such as which brands of credit card they accept and their merchant number, issued by their bank. Step 4 requires the merchant to enter their banking partner and payment processing information. Yes, one of each must be selected. You can see from this example that the Mako system knows the IP details of the selected payment processing organisation. Next, the merchant registers their payment terminals and other hardware assets associated within their payment network. All hardware appliances within the merchant's payment network need to be registered. This screen forms the basis for the merchant's site network diagram, which is a requirement of PCI DSS. Once all of the hardware assets have been registered, it is important to note the disclaimer before clicking the next tab. At this point, the firewall rules required in order to comply with PCI DSS are assigned against the network selected previously as the payment network. This last screen shows the inbound and outbound rules for internet access and communication between LAN 1 and LAN 2. Red indicates no access. You can see by the diagram there is no communication between LAN 1 and LAN 2 and no direct access to or from the internet from within the payment network. The only exception to this is a pinhole that has been opened so the payment terminals can communicate with the payment gateway. This is highlighted in green. That concludes the actions required to implement the PCI DSS template onto the network using the Mako system. You can see from the screen that the PCI template for this site has been applied. It is possible to have more detail by selecting the Status tab under Reports. One very important part of the Mako system is to ensure a merchant is able to stay compliant with the requirements. We've just seen how to implement the PCI DSS template. You are now going to see what happens if someone creates an unsecure firewall rule, effectively breaking compliance. Adding a rule that causes risk of compromising a site's PCI DSS status flags a warning message and asks the merchant to acknowledge this risk by asking them to re-enter their password before the change is implemented. The Mako system then flags the PCI DSS template as broken and changes the LAN1 configuration window to red, showing that the template is no longer in place. Again, more detail around this change and more importantly who made the change is logged under the Status tab. To reinstate the PCI DSS template is a very simple process as you can see. Again, more detail around the template being restored is logged under the Status tab.